let's measure the valves. This is an inhale valve, the center in the valve. I want to measure the stem. Yamaha says that it has to be between 4 millimeters for 475 to 4.490. Now we'll use a micrometer for this one to have accurate measurements. Don't measure it down here or up there, measure it here where the valve works. So you have an accurate measurement of what exactly you need to measure. So go all the way in. Once we arrive at the end, use this one, that little pin. Once we do that, we lock it in place. And then we measure how much it is. You can see it's, you see right here. It says four millimeters, 490, four pour 490. So this valve is really good. Well, at least the stem is really good. Let's measure other things now. Bad. If you see here, I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, the seat of the valve, it's so worn and this is what caused a leak on many valves. Because the seat is so worn, it allowed the valve to sit much higher and that much higher make it to be pressed by the cams even though the lobes of the cams were in compression set. So even though the valve they shouldn't be compressed, they were compressed because this valve was higher than normal, a couple of tenths of millimeter, and that was crucial. So for a tenth of millimeter, the valve or two was kept open, and that was enough to lose compression. So these valves are pretty worn, most of them, not all of them, but I'm going to replace all of them because if these ones are worn, imagine what's going to happen with the rest of them. I don't want to open the engine again. Not for that reason anyway. So I'll replace all of them. This is an exhaust valve. It should be 446 to 4.75. And now just try the small one. Once you reach that point, lock it and then check. 4.47. 4.47. So, stem-wise, this valve is okay. And they seem to be pretty okay after a brief cleanup. Yes, there are there is some kind of uh, roughness here on the edge, right where the uh, seat valve is. But I believe with a bit of uh, grinding paste, uh, things are going to go absolutely perfect. However, there's four of them that they need replacement, so I'll replace four of them. Another thing with the valves, you need to measure the diameter of the head. The diameter on an inlet valve, which is this one, then the inlet valve should be 23.4 to 23.6. 23.6, which is within limits, perfect. And for the exhaust valves, should be 24.9 to 25.1. 24.9 to 25.1 24.9 I think we're just on the limit 24.93 good instead of making it harder for me to show you with a micrometer and I can't see really well I'll show you with a vernier caliper which I've attached the uh, micrometer measures I'm just going to show you what exactly and where exactly to measure so this is the inlet camshaft, you have to measure the lobes. The lobes, the big length of the lobes and the base of the lobes have different uh, dimensions of course. So let's start with the base of the lobe. This one here should be 24.95, 25.05 millimeters and the minimum is 24.85 millimeters. So you take the vernier calipers or the micrometer, otherwise you won't have a good 5.03, that's more like it. So we are at the upper limit. If that was 24.85, that would be the minimum limit and you would be suggested to replace the camshaft. Supposedly that is 32.63. 
which is pretty good because the inlet camshaft, the lobes have to be 32.55 to 32.65. So we're good, we're perfect. Minimum 32.45, less than that, replace the camshafts. This one should be 32.95 to 33.05. Let's see what we got. We got 32.94, 32.85. We are on the limit and we have to replace it. So we're still good. And the base slope should be exactly like the inlet. These are the same, which is 24.95 to 25.05. And we have 24.99, which is perfect. 24.85 would be in need to replace the camshaft. So, of course, don't stay on one lobe, base and full length. Measure all of them and make sure each one of them is in within specifications. All 8 on this one and all 12 on the uh, inlet one. Now, of course, a few more information about how to measure the camshaft. Now, how do we measure the internal diameter? Uh, there's two ways. One's, one is the internal micrometer diameter, which unfortunately due to COVID regulation hasn't arrived, but these ones arrived, the telescopic gauges. They're spring-loaded and you can put it in there it takes the internal diameter, you squeeze it, and then whatever that is, you can measure it on an external diameter micrometer, like this, attached on a micrometer base, like this one I have, to make things easier for you. And then you go here. Of course, don't do it as I did now. This is just as a demo. Make sure you torque these old things down. You have the upper part of the cylinder head onto the lower because you have to torque all of them. Of course, don't put the uh, camshafts on it. Otherwise, <laughs> there's nothing to measure. Put all of these up there. Torque them to the correct amount of uh, torque specifications. And one by one, just do each and one of them. Dimensions. We have those two joints here, one, two, that's for cylinder one. Then we have another two joints, these ones for cylinder two, another two for cylinder three, and another two for cylinder four. Now, both camshafts, joints for cylinder one, for inlet and four, for inlet, and one for exhaust and four for exhaust, they're exactly the same. How much? So, cylinder 1 and 4, that's why I'm going to write it in inches as well up here, you'll see it on the screen further up, uh, in millimeters for 1 and 4, all four joints are 24.470 to 24.491 millimeters. And for cylinders number 2 and 3, inlet and exhaust, it's 24.5 millimeters sharp to 24.521 millimeters. Now there is another joint for each camshaft which is the, the main joint of this one here that and there's another one for the exhaust camshaft as well. Those two have a different dimension 24.437 to 24.450 both of them. As I said, inches are up there as well, you can see. Really now, there's another thing that you need to measure about the uh, springs. This is the inlet one, which is a bit shorter than the exhaust spring, and it has to be 40.73 millimeters. Slowly and carefully, 40.78 millimeters. I think I'm okay, I think I can live with that. And the other one is the exhaust, which has to be 4 millimeters longer, which is 44.01 millimeters. 44.13, still can't live with that. 
the measurement that you have to do for the piston is right here. You have to measure the piston diameter at the bottom of the skid. How far at the bottom of the skid? 3 millimeters from the bottom of the skid. So that's very specific. Okay, now you have to put your micrometer. Don't put a Venus caliper. You won't find any correct dimensions. Somewhere there at the bottom of the skid. Something like that. And measure. The correct dimension should be 75.425 to 75.440 millimeters. Now, another thing you need to do is to measure the piston ring gaps. This gap right here within the cylinder, how much that is. If it's too tight, you're going to seize the engine. If it's too open, that means it's not that tight and you won't have a proper compression. It's going to leak compression from between the cylinder and the piston rings. So how can you measure that? Of course these are the old ones. I have new ones which I'm going to replace anyway. Even though these seem to be in good condition. Now you have to turn the cylinder block upside down. Pull it up roughly. The bottom the skid of the cylinder. The reason I did this is I want to put in a surface that it's untouched, like this one here. If you can see that little brownish area, that's where I want to do the test. Not on the worn area. The worn area is going to give me, show me wrong indications. Clean the piston ring as well. Put it in there and make, make sure you move it just a bit further down. Don't go further than this area. To do that, use the pistons. Push it about 20, 25 millimeters down there. Leave it. And then you measure what's the gap here with the help of the filler gauge. Yamaha says it has to be 0.3 to 0.5 millimeters. If the gap is 0.7 millimeters or more, you need to replace the piston rings. 5, 6, it doesn't really fit. So, that piston ring is okay. The same goes for the second piston ring, the second compression ring, slightly down there. And the reason we do this is to make the ring to be flat. Because if the ring sits like this inside the cylinder, guess what? It's not going to give you the correct measurement here at the end of the gap. Yes, it's right there. It's three. If I try to put 3.33, uh, roughly, but no, it doesn't go all the way in. And of course, the two oil rings, they have to be, they have a lot more uh, gap. Yamaha says 0.2 to 0.8 millimeters. They don't say how much is the minimum though. They just say 0.2 to 0.8 millimeters. If someone knows, please comment on that. But of course, I'm going to do that with the brand new piston rings, just to make sure that I ordered the correct ones. Another thing it has to do about your clutch, the steel plates, not the friction plates, the steel plates have to be between 1.9 to 2.1 millimeters thickness. So you press your vernier calipers like this. This is 1.95, so it's within limits, so I'm going to keep this. Another thing that I notice many people do is that you have to place it on a very flat surface, uh, a steel plate. The machinist uses it's the perfect one, but you can always still use a thick tempered glass. You place it there and you see if it sits properly, if it has any warp. And to do that you have to put the uh, filler gauge underneath and see if it fills in. I think one tenth of the millimeter is the uh, limit. Now we have the other ones, which are the friction plates. And for the friction plates it's 2.9 to 3.1. Now, even though I'm going to replace them anyway, because I think nobody has ever replaced them, just to show you, 2.9 to 3.1. Whew, that's 3.56. Now, another thing you need to measure, that's your clutch springs. They have a minimum free length of 54 millimeters. So, penny calipers, you don't need a micrometer for this, 54. Let's see, before it starts compressing, and these ones are way gone. These ones are 49.85, 49.95. They're not 54. 
these ones are gone. Now, we need to measure if the oil pump is okay, which is the basic component of the engine. If that doesn't pump oil correctly to the proportion it does, to the pressure it does, none of this is going to work. So consider this, think of this like the heart of your body. If the heart doesn't pump any blood, oh well, see you later, much later. So let's take this one out. Two things we need to measure. One is the gap of the inner rotor and the outer rotor. But this is not. And that should be 0.20 millimeters. So you place it like this. You push that direction. goes in there but not the 20 so I guess that's good what is 0.15 should be the outer into the housing the external rotor with the housing the only way you can measure it is measure the external rotor 4052 and then you measure the housing inside 4059. So then you have to abstract that size from that size. And in our case we have that. That's the only way to measure it. Otherwise you can't fit a filler in here between these two gaps. There's no chance. The filler will bend, it won't fit, will show you wrong indications. And as long as the gap is the correct one which in that case it is, you're all good to go. Same goes for the cylinders. Telescopic gauges again. Now Yamaha states that you have to go 4 centimeters, 40 millimeters down here from the top dead center deep into the uh, cylinder to measure. And the good idea is always to take two measurements. One southeast, as I like to call it, and one more northwest. 90 degrees apart then you add them both and you divide them by the number of measurements which is two in that case and we have the average because you might have some over on the cylinder usually you do and if that is that is within specs you're good to go now they don't say what's the minimum all they say for 89 onwards models as you'll see up here it says 75.5 millimeters to 75.505 but they do not mention on the book on the service manual how much is the minimum acceptable uh, bore opening so again you put that thing in there 40 millimeters below and if you don't want to if, if you're not sure how much is 40 millimeters just put a ruler in there mark it mark mark on the points that you want to measure for example make a mark down there here here and here and do your measurements slightly out of alignment and then you push it to take all the gaps you take it out and then you go next door to the micrometer and measure to tell you how much it is not much of a job it's not really hard you just need to have the right tools at this point I'd like to thank you for watching my video. Please like or subscribe, leave a comment and if you found it beneficial let me know. Thanks for watching again, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!